Welcome back. In this video, we'll start creating longitudinal profiles of pipelines, which is one of the basic and important tasks of a high-quality design of pipe networks. Longitudinal profiles can also help a lot in identifying and solving the interference problems between pipe networks as you develop your design. InfraWizard has a set of smart and intuitive features that helps producing the longitudinal profiles of pressure and gravity networks very quickly. Let's explore them right now. To start drawing profiles, I'll click the button Manage Profiles. Here I have a list of all networks in the project, including the gravity and pressure networks. To create profiles in the network SW, I'll select it, then click Add New. In the Create Profile dialog, you'll see a lot of options, but don't get confused. We'll get our profiles ready in a few clicks. First of all, I have two main options for selecting the pipeline elements. I'd use the manual pipe selection if I want to draw one longitudinal profile for a certain pipeline that I'm going to select manually on screen. In this case, I'll define the line name here, for example, SW1, then select the line elements on screen. I can select a line by clicking some elements along the route, or even by selecting the first and last node in it. Once I'm finished, I'll press Enter. I can use the reverse option to reverse the order of elements which corresponds to the profile direction in the drawing. I should then select a profile style to be used. The profile style controls the format of the profile and defines what data to be shown in it. It can also be customized in the profile styles panel here. You'll learn more about profile styles in the next episode of this tutorial. And here I'll pick the insertion point of the profile in the drawing. I'll then click OK to see what we've got at this point. Here's my first profile. It is showing the sewer line I selected in the graph area and the data bands containing geometric data according to the profile style. To modify the definition of this profile, I can either double click it or use the command InfraWizard Edit from the context menu. By the way, when you double click a profile, you will get a different response depending on the element you clicked because you can edit a pipe or a node by double-clicking it on the profile. The changes I make here will be updated directly in the profile. You can even edit a crossing pipe by double-clicking. So if you want to edit the profile definition, it's better to double-click the data bands area. The Edit Profile dialog is very similar to the first dialog we used to create the profile. I can modify the definition of the profile here. For example, I can reverse the line, or even extend it to include more pipes. Now let's continue exploring the other options of the profile definition. The profile datum is the elevation of the baseline of the profile. I can select the option Auto to let InfraWizard define the datum automatically based on the levels of the pipeline and the crossing pipes shown in the profile, or select the option Predefined to enter a certain value here. The plan annotations are the annotations shown on the plan alignment of the pipeline to relate the plan alignment to the profile. I can select to show the line name and the profile stations in plan. The plan annotations will directly appear in plan as a block object and it will be automatically updated if I modify the profile. The format and spacing of the stations in plan are the same as those shown in the stations data band of the profile and it can be modified in the profile style. Here I can set the start station of the profile if it is not zero. This option is particularly useful when you have very long pipelines because any profile in InfraWizard can contain a maximum of 500 pipes. So if you have a pipeline that contains more than 500 pipes, you should split it into two or more profiles. In this case, you'll set the start station of the second profile to match the end station of the first profile and so on. Here we reach the options of showing ground lines in the profile. You can show two ground lines in any profile. One of them is supposed to represent the design ground or the finished ground, while the other is for the existing ground. 
When you select to show either line, you should define the source of data to be used for this ground line. The data source can be either the node ground levels or a civil 3D surface. If you're using InfraWizard with AutoCAD or Map3D, you'll only have the option of node ground levels. The other options you see here will only appear if you're using InfraWizard on Civil 3D. In this case, you can select one of the two surfaces assigned to the network, or select a particular surface in the project. I highly recommend that you make use of the primary and secondary surfaces of the network when you define the data source of ground lines. I usually use the finished ground surface as the primary surface of the network and the existing ground surface as the secondary surface. In this case, if I get an updated surface with a new name and assign it to the network, all profiles of this network will be automatically updated to read the new data. For example, if I assign this surface called Surface 5 to the network as a secondary surface, you'll see that the profile is directly updated. But if I select the option Predefined Surface, the profile will keep reading data from this particular surface regardless of what surfaces are assigned to the network. You'll notice that when I use the node ground levels as a data source, the ground line is represented with straight lines between the nodes, because the data in between the nodes are not available in this case. But if I assign one of the surfaces, I'll get an accurate representation of the ground line through the graph. Now we come to the most interesting part of this session. It is the automatic generation of profiles. When I select a network to create profiles, for example the network SW, InfraWizard shows two options for pipe selection. Till now, we used the option called Manual Pipe Selection, which helped us creating a single profile for a single sewer line. The option Automatic Pipe Selection can help you creating hundreds of profiles in a few clicks, which really saves a lot of time. The behavior of this option will be different depending on the network type. Let's start with Gravity Networks. I selected the network SW as an example here. When I click Automatic Pipe Selection, I get two options to select from. The first one will let InfraWizard detect the lines based on the network hierarchy. When you select this option in a gravity network, InfraWizard will start searching for the network outlets where each outlet will be considered as network root node. InfraWizard will then look for the longest route from this node to the most upstream node, and this will be the first profile route. It will then continue to trace branches from this route to the other upstream ends of the network. The results of this analysis will appear here as a set of suggested routes of sewer lines that cover the whole network. When I click any of these lines, we'll see in the next panel the complete list of elements included in it. And I can also rename the profile here. We have an additional option here that defines the preferred profile direction. So InfraWizard can prepare these routes considering a downstream to upstream direction or an upstream to downstream direction. In this example, I have a small network, so I got only six profiles covering the whole network. But if it is a large network, this list may include several hundreds of profile routes. I'll select all of my six profiles, pick an insertion point, and here we go. Now if I open the same dialog again and select the same option, you'll notice that no profiles are suggested because InfraWizard knows that the automatically detected profiles are already there in the project. The second option for automatic pipe selection is selecting the profile routes based on the node names which are typically manhole names in a gravity network. If I select this option, InfraWizard will try to trace the manhole names to recognize the structure of the network and suggest the routes of longitudinal profiles. 
To make this work, the naming of manholes should follow a simple convention that is explained in the help document under the section called Creating a New Profile. According to this naming convention, the line name takes the name of the downstream manhole or node it is connected to. For example, this line connected at downstream to the outfall G is called line G, and this line connected at downstream to the manhole MHG2 is called line G2. The manhole name itself consists of three parts. The first part is the prefix, like MH dot, MH dash, M dot H dot, etc. This part is optional, and InfraWizard can still recognize line roots if the manhole names do not contain a prefix. The second part in the manhole name represents the line name, so all manholes in line G will start with MH.G, and all manholes in line G2 will start with MH.G-2. This is how InfraWizard knows that all these manholes belong to the same sewer line. The last part of the manhole name is the serial number of the manhole in the line. So if we finally look at line G, you'll see that we have manholes MH.G-1, MH.G-2, MH.G-3, and so on. While in line G2, we have MH.G-2-1, MH.G-2-2, MH.G-2-3, and so on. The separator character between the letters and numbers in the manhole name can be either a dot, a dash, or a slash character. InfraWizard will analyze the name of each manhole in the network to define the name of the main line it belongs to, then group the manholes and the related pipes connecting them into unique profile routes which are finally listed here. There are two special cases you may encounter in some gravity networks, and I'll show you how to deal with them right now. The first case is when you have two lines connected to the same downstream manhole, like in this example. Here we have a main line called line G, and we have two branching lines connected to the manhole MHG4. Applying our naming convention here means that these two lines will have the same name, which is supposed to be line G4. This is not acceptable, however, because every profile must have a unique name. In this case, we'll append a suffix letter to the manhole names in each of the two lines to differentiate between them. In this example, we have the letter A appended to the manholes in this line and the letter B appended to the manholes in the other one. By doing this, InfraWizard will recognize this line as G4A and will recognize the other line as G4B. It is important that this suffix letter be written in uppercase to let InfraWizard know that there are two different lines. The lowercase suffix has a different meaning for InfraWizard, as we'll see in a while. The second case is when you add an intermediate manhole within a line and you don't want to renumber all manholes in this line. In this case, you can give this new manhole the same name of its upstream or downstream manhole and add a suffix letter to make it a unique name, same as shown here. It is important that this suffix letter be written in lowercase. This will let InfraWizard know that this manhole is in the same line with the other manholes and not in another line like in the previous case. Now let's go back to our Create Profile dialog. Since I have one outfall only in the network called Outfall K, I've got six profile routes in this network which are all related to the root node called Outfall K. If I select any of these routes, we'll see the list of nodes and pipes composing this route shown in the same order that will appear in the profile. When I toggle between the two options of profile direction, you'll notice that the order of elements is reversed. I'll select all of them, pick an insertion point, and click OK. Here are the six profiles we selected, drawn based on the manhole names. Now let's take a look at automatic selection in pressure networks. I'll select the network PW as an example and click Add New. With the first option of automatic selection based on network hierarchy, InfraWizard will try to create profile routes by grouping pipes based on their diameter. That's why every profile name contains the network name, the nominal diameter of the pipes in this line, and the name of the first pipe in it. I find this option helpful in creating a quick set of profiles to check crossings or to check the low and high points of the network. The other option is creating profiles based on pipe names. 
It is similar to the option of creating gravity profiles based on manhole names, except that InfraWizard will use the pipe names instead of node names, because the pressure networks can be looped and don't necessarily have the tree structure like a gravity network. In this example, you see that the pipes in this line all start with the name P-A, followed by serial numbers from 1 to 4. So InfraWizard has grouped these pipes in a profile route called line A. The other pipes here all start with the name P-A-2, followed by the serial numbers 1 and 2. So InfraWizard has grouped them in a profile route called line A2. I'll select the profile routes I got here and pick an insertion point. It's very useful to have the profile stations shown in plan for pressure networks because it's much easier to trace a pressure line using the stations rather than using the node names. You now know all about creating longitudinal profiles of your pipe networks. It is important to practice it, to get familiar with the naming conventions and make the best use of the automatic selection feature. In the next video, we'll take a deeper look at the profile styles and we'll explore their options in detail. We'll see you soon.